Good morning and welcome to Book Break with Greece Public Library. I am Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate the Pints and Prose Book Discussion Group as well as the Virtual Science Fiction and Fantasy Book Discussion Group. And as always, I am here with Claire. Hello, everyone. I'm Claire. I moderate the Historical Fiction Book Club on Facebook and also the As the Page Turns Book Club. And as you'll find out today, Kirstra and I are both avid readers that can't finish everything we want to read. So we're going to share it's some true. of our, our choices today. Yes. So today we're doing something a little different. Um, we're calling this our stack of shame edition. Um, so Claire and I have each come with um, a stack of five books uh, released in 2020. So these are all pretty recent books um, that have been on our list, but we just haven't gotten to yet. So we're gonna talk about um, what those are and why we're looking forward to them. Um, please do comment in the comment, comment in the comments. Um, if you have read any of these uh, with your take, your recommendations, or if there are other books that are in your stacks of shame uh, that you would like to share with the rest of us. Um, so let's dive right in. Claire, do you wanna start with your first pick? Sure. You know what? I forgot the 2020. So I'm like oh. shuffling over here <laughs> thinking, I don't think that came out this year. Um, my first one is The Vanishing mm -hmm. Half by Britt Bennett. And doubly shameful because I bought the book with my <laughs> Book of the Month Club credit. But um, she wrote a book called The Mothers, which I mm. was considering for As the Page Turns. And I'm not sure it got enough votes to do. So I've been wanting to read her for some time. But this one fascinated me because it is a story about twins um, mm. that were so close as children. And then they ultimately chose to live in different worlds, one in a world with other black people and the other one with white and just the repercussions mm. later. So I just thought the whole premise of this was fascinating. The mm -hmm. reviews were great. Um, so I, I may be taking it away since I own it on my next ha, vacation, whatever that may be. Uh, <laughs> but yes, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I've I've heard about that one. I think that one's in my in my good Goodreads list. It didn't quite make this list for me, but yeah. Um, my first one is The Glass Hotel by yes. St. John Mandel. Yes. Um, Emily St. John. Emily St. John Mandel uh, also wrote Station Eleven, which is probably one of my favorite books that I've read in the last five years. Um, I loved that book so much, and I am now just willing to follow this woman wherever she's going. Um, <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Um, so this one is, so Station Eleven is like a post-apocalypse kind of story. Um, this one, the sort of crisis that it centers around is a financial crisis. There's kind of a Bernie Madoff figure um, and his Ponzi scheme collapses. And from what I gather, it's, you know, got the same kind of, um, you know, intertwining narratives, lots of characters. You get to see how people's lives intersect, um, which I really enjoyed about Station Eleven. So super looking forward to this one and i don't know why i haven't read it already i've well no, here's me. my my little shameful <laughs> secret about hmm. the glass hotel is i'm on netgalley and i got mm -hmm. the um preview of that the arc of that mm -hmm. to read and i still haven't read it so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i've gotten so overwhelmed with stuff yeah. i'm reading for all my different book mm -hmm. clubs that a lot of yeah people, like some of the others but yeah that one's on my list as well because as you know, I loved Station Eleven too. And I think we both have tried unsuccessfully to get our book clubs to read that book to no avail. No one wants to read it ever. And I don't know why it makes me so sad because I love that book so much. And, and especially right now, uh, what a perfect yeah. book to be reading. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Um, my next one is called Simon the Fiddler, and I just pulled this off the shelf because Paulette Giles mm -hmm. um, was, oh, bad, bad Blair, um, <laughs> was another one of my 
favorite books. She wrote News of the World, mm -hmm. um, which I was going to book talk. And I, I love the historical setting. It's, it's back in Texas again. And Simon the Fiddler is, from what I gather, a young man who is attempting not to be conscripted into the, the Civil War. So he's mm. passing him, he's in his 20s, passing himself off as like a 15-year-old fiddler, um, going from town to town, making money, trying to, to figure out his life. And then, by God, they catch him. So <laughs> he, he does have to go into the war at the very end. So... Um, that's the premise of the book, and I'm just curious because in her book, News of the World, you just love those characters mm -hmm. so much. It was like the captain and a young girl who had been kidnapped and raised by native tribes. I think it was the Kiowa, um, and I just love that book. So I'm really hoping that this one, you know, kind of follows in that same vein, and it's something I will also love. So. Nice. Yeah. News of the world has been on my list since you started talking about it. And I still haven't gone to that one either. Yeah. <laughs> the stack of shame, it just keeps the growing. The stack of shame <laughs> keeps growing. <laughs> um, okay. My next book is My Dark Vanessa uh, by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Um, as you can see, I don't actually have a physical copy of that one. Um, some of these books are new enough that they still have a little bit of a holds list. Um, so this is a debut novel. Um, it's kind of a Me Too story, or and it came out sort of right at the height of Me Too moment. Um, so the premise is that um, Vanessa is... A high school student, she enters into a relationship with one of her teachers. Um, and so when she's 15, um, and then about 15 years later, um, there's been a rise of allegations of sexual misconduct against this teacher, and someone reaches out to her, you know, for her take to see if she wants to, you know, I guess, uh, participate in this reckoning. And she has to decide um, what to do about it and look is looking back on that relationship sort of with new eyes. So um, it's gotten a lot of buzz. Um, I think it was published at a very timely moment mm -hmm. um, and that helped with the buzz, but um, it's still a debut that I'm interested in. I know that there are several staff members that read that book. Mm -hmm. and recommended highly so yeah having two daughters i just couldn't go there you know no, that's fair so yeah i had to stop reading a lot of stuff when i mm. was the mother of young young daughters so mm -hmm. but, no i get it so my next one and i'm i'm sharing the love for the the jenna's book club i seem to have jumped ship from reese to jenna so <laughs> I, so, so it's called Dear Edward, and um, some of my friends recommended this to me, and this is one I, I thought about, but I think the premise is there's a plane full of people, it goes down, there's one survivor, and it's mm. a 13-year-old or 12-year-old boy, um, and then how his life, you know, his story is A, captured by the nation, and then how he struggles to find mm. a place without his family. Um, so it's coming of age, a lot of characters, different stories. Mm -hmm. Um, the premise really interests me, but for some reason I've checked it out numerous times and have not read it yet. Um, but I've been told it's really good. So nice. Um, it sounds kind of similar, at least in themes to, um, after the fall. Yes. I which I did Holly. read. Mm -hmm. I, and I like that. Did yeah. you read it? I did. We actually read that one for Pints in Prose. Okay. I really liked it. Yeah, I did yeah. too. Nice. All right. So my next one, I'm pretty sure is not going to be on your list, Claire. <laughs> uh, it is The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. Um, N.K. Jemison is a fantasy writer um, working, living and working out of New York. Um, she is 
I gotta say one of the the best fantasy writers I've read in a long time. Um, I read her Broken Earth trilogy last year. That was the first of her that I had read. And I was like, how have I not read this author before? She's amazing. Um, so she's another one that I'm like ready to go wherever she leads. Um, so this one, the premise is um, every city has, um, has a soul essentially um, in New York, um, there are five. So one for each of the boroughs and um, as sort of an evil presence stirs in New York, um, there is an avatar for each of the five boroughs um, that has to, and they have to come together and fight this evil to sort of save their city. Um, so yeah, super excited about that one. That sounds really good. Mm -hmm. I think it also would have a lot of crossover teen appeal too. Yeah, that probably. Fantasy element and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I get the sense that um, like some of the evil manifests in sort of like societal evil. Like there's a lot of allegory that's happening here. Um, so I think it's also going to be pretty timely with the, the moment that we're in. Mm -hmm. the next one i had is a woman is no man mm. and i think this is another like family story i like reading things about places that i've never been mm -hmm. don't really know much about um this is set in palestine 1990 mm. um and then again in brooklyn for 2008 with like I also like family stories that are mm -hmm. tiered. Um, so this one, a 17 year old girl uh, loves to read. She is not really interested in a traditional life yet her father is pressing her to arrange a marriage, which mm -hmm. is common in their culture. So she finds herself betrothed, married, and then she goes to Brooklyn, New York. And then um, now we're gonna hear from the granddaughter uh, of this woman. So. Um, it kind of reminds me of a book that we just read for Historical Fiction Book Club, which was The Mountain Sing mm. set in Vietnam. Okay. That yeah. one, I also a debut in 2020. And that one was fantastic. So I hope that it kind of gives me that same mother-daughter vibes. And one of the things mm -hmm. we talked about is how interesting it is to have a book um, particularly set in troubling times from a woman's perspective, because mm -hmm. war stories written by a man are so totally different, filled with facts and so forth. But the woman, you get to really feel what happens to them mm -hmm. and what they go through during these difficult times, and mm -hmm. usually how the women hold it all together. Sure. Go women. Um, <laughs> love to pick up the pieces and then... <laughs> Stuffed back into the box sure. when the whole confrontation is over. So yeah. I'm kind of hoping that this A Woman Is No Man has the same elements. Um, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I picked it up is nice. I like The Mountain Sing so much. Very cool. Yeah, you talked about The Mountain Sing in our last book break, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, my next is These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. That's um, gone home with me, so. I know. You said you started <laughs> it and not finished it, so. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but this is another debut. Um, this one, so it's, uh, a transporting debut novel that reveals the ways in which a Jamaican family forms and fractures over generations. So again, we've got like the generational story. Um, and in this case, uh, there's, so a, a man who has assumed the identity of, um, his best friend. Um, and that's, that's right in the summary. I'm not, I'm not giving spoilers. Um, no. He has, he has. Yeah, that starts a, right, right there in the yeah. get-go. Yeah. So he's lived as this other man for 30 years, and now he is dying in New York. And the um, home health aide who comes to take care of him is his daughter, who hasn't seen him in 30 years and thinks that he's dead because he faked his death to assume this other identity. So yeah, I mean, it, it just sounds 
fascinating. Um, and, yeah. you know, again, like how um, secrets harm families and like what you do when you learn new information, and how it kind of explodes your life. I do love a good That's family nice. secret. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that one, because I read, I read at least a good third of it. Um, mm -hmm. You learn a lot about Jamaica too, like a okay. different side of Jamaica, not just the tourism Jamaica. Sure. So I, it was interesting. I will definitely go back and read that one, mm -hmm. finish it. Nice. All right, All right. What's your last one, Claire? Another, another debut, um, mm. The Girl with a Louding Voice. And this one, it's funny. Um, I have this one lady that comes into the library and always, you know, trades recommendations with me. Mm -hmm. And um, after we opened, you know, during the pandemic, I was so happy to see her come up to the desk. And she said to me, I have a book for you. You know, <laughs> you have to read this. It is so good. So I bought it with my book of the month club because of course our copy was checked out. Of and course. Holds and whatever, because, uh, you know, everything is kind of slow. But it's um, a 14-year-old Nigerian girl who knows what she wants. She wants her education. Um, but the only daughter of a broke father, she is a valuable commodity. Removed from school and she's sold to, uh, as a third wife to an old man. So she finds her life amounts to this. Four goats, two bags of ice, rice, some chickens, and a new TV. Um, and then she's secretly sold as a domestic servant uh, hmm. in, in Logos, Lagos. Um, but she's told that she's nothing, and yet she's determined to find her voice. So she is, it says she's a remarkable, unforgettable heroine, um, an incredible debut novel, heartbreaking coming of age story that captures a young woman's courageous struggle for her right to choose her own future. So. The girl with the nice. loudest voice. Go oh, ahead and put it good. on hold because I own mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to put that one on my list too. That sounds really good. Yeah. Nice. All right. My last one is Mexican Gothic uh, by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Yeah. Um, so this one, I don't know too much about it, but I know that um, one of the reviews calls it Lovecraft meets the Brontes in Latin America. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. That's for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a, like a slow burn, weird, gothic horror uh, set in the 1950s in Mexico. Um, and I'm super excited about it because it sounds like the kind of creepy weird that is right up my alley. Yeah, I, I actually thought about that one because it was another book of the month club choice. Mm. And um and when I saw the word horror, you know how I am mm -hmm. about horror. I'm a big old chicken. Um, <laughs> so I was like, eh, I don't know, you know. But I'm very curious to get your take on that one and to see how scary it is because if exactly. it's not too scary, I might go for it. Yes, Claire and I have a deal now <laughs> where when a horror book comes up that we both like, I will read it first and let Claire know how creepy it is. Um, I just finished Wonderland by Zoya Stage, um, which I'm probably going to be talking about in our next book break. Um, and I asked Claire if she wanted it. She was like, mm, how scary. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave and read yes, it. Yep. Yes, absolutely. It's really good. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I will let you know when I get to Mexican Gothic what I thought. Um, all right, now I know I have a couple of runners up that I can just mention the titles. Did you bring a couple runners up too, Claire? Um, yeah, two of them I don't think are published in the right time. But oh, okay. One, one I pulled right off the, the new shelf, so. All right, what you got? Lightning round. Old Love Good Girls, Gail Godwin. Okay. And you know me, if the book is set in the South and it has lots of weird characters, I am all in, people. Mm -hmm. um, so this one is a Love Good Junior College for Girls, set in 1958. And I don't know if I ever told you the story. My mother had a friend. <laughs> she went to one of those Southern colleges and was mm -hmm. like, oh, your daughter would be perfect there. And I was like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think my mother was heartbroken, but... Um, uh, this one just 
you know, I think it was a friendship and then falling mm -hmm. out and then years later they have to get back together. So of course I, I had to, I had to go for that just for the old Southern friendship sure. college thing. You know? Absolutely. Um, I've got The Deep by mm -hmm. Alma Katsu. Um, she wrote The Hunger, which was like a kind of horror take on the Donner Party. Um, oh. And this one is Haunted Titanic. Oh dear. That's so, interesting. Yes. All you Titanic fans out there. Indeed. Titanic, horror. There's a lot of horror and fantasy on my list right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've also got another horror, The Only Good Indians. Oh, I, I want to read that Graham one. Stephen Graham Jones. Well. Yes. Um, which someone described as um, Paul Tremblay meets There There by Tommy Orange. Yeah. So here for it. Um, did you have any others, Claire? Or that was your only? That, that was my only. Okay. And I've got one more. Upright Women Wanted Ooh. by Sarah Gailey, um, which is a fantasy pick. So like a fantasy Western thing. So yeah. Yeah. So I guess I could, could have brought um, Wonderland, which is sitting on my oh, desk. But yeah. since we're going to do that next time. Well, that's all right. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I like to read that one because it's, it's scary, creepy house mm -hmm. set in state New York. So it's like, how can you go mm -hmm. wrong? So. Yes, all of you Adirondacks fans may oh. or may not want to read that one before your next vacation. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so I think that's all we have for today. Um, we'll keep you all posted if we get to any of these anytime soon. Um, and we'll be back in two weeks with another sort of regular book break. Um, but again, please do let us know in the comments if you've read any of the books that we mentioned and liked them or didn't like them, um, or if you have any other suggestions for things to add to our ever-growing stack of shame. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. One last, one last look. Very satisfying. <laughs> I like it. Um, so that's what we have for today. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you next time. Take care.